Forsling, Lundell, Barkoff, Bobrovsky, but Forsling and Lundell were special tonight, right? They were fantastic. His gap was fantastic. When you look, the thing that we didn't like about our game five was our gap, and it's really what he does for a living. Oh my God, right from the start, he was so good with it, and then he also throws in some offense. He's just... Like, I think that's what the Norris Trophy is. I, do, I don't think it's who the defenseman necessarily that gets the most points, and it's very difficult to, to identify a guy then if we're talking about things that aren't easily measured. But I think that that's why, like Gustav, there are different styles of defensemen, but in his style, he's the best in the world. Uh, Paul, uh, the Sulky's going to be awarded tomorrow. You think there's a better lasting highlight than, uh, than Barkov on oh. that Pasternak shot? You want to talk about the highs and lows of emotions on the bench, right? Like that's a gaping net and a legitimate block. And then, oh my God, did he break something? He's off the bench. And you don't hear anything. So at that point, right, it makes the block. We end up tying the, like, scoring the goal. It's a little bit of chaos down there, right? We got, I've lost two centermen. Mikkel has left. And then here he comes back, and then he's fine. So it was quite the roller coaster. I, his game five was fantastic. Barkov's game five was. So we lose the game so it doesn't get noticed. But man, was he a powerful, dominant man. He plays a different game now than he's ever played. He was so good uh, at both ends. So hopefully he's the guy. Uh, Paul, flipping Lundell and Bennett on their line, just what went into that and just obviously things worked out. Oh, uh, being able, and obviously, yeah. obviously having the comfort of Lundell with Ferragy and Kachuk had to have helped with making, being able to make so that. So that's the Tampa series. So it's the thing you learn in adversity, maybe is the most important thing in playoffs. You lose Sam Bennett, Lundell goes in, and Verhage and Kachuk have, I don't know, whatever they got, 13 points, something like that. They take off. Benny comes back. We win the next two. Why would you change anything? Except Lundell's on fire, right? Like he's playing a different game now than I've ever seen him play. And when we when Lundy scored his goal, Kachuk and Verhage are on the ice, so that was it. Just leave them and let those guys run. Benny's fine. He's just missed five playoff games, right? He's still kind of coming back into form, so that's kind of why it happened. Just the way these last two games were really a grind, how much does that attest in your team's patience? And it seems like your team is comfortable playing these kind of games. Yeah. No, I, I don't think you're wrong. No, I don't think you're wrong. I'm just, what I'm trying to relate to you is the emotion. This series felt way different than last year's. I think that we're a much better team than we were last year when we came in here. On personnel and on experience. I also think that they, the Boston Bruins played really hard. It, it was different, right? They had had such a big year last year. So they kind of, the series, like this was an amazing series from behind the bench. It was, it was dirty on both sides. I'm not, it was heavy, it was clean, it was brilliantly skilled at times. It was a grind, like you said, except both goalies were phenomenal. So, like we, we didn't give it, we had a stretch there. I look at the clock, there's like 14 shots against. I'm thinking, oh, we've given up 10 shots here in a long period of time. Except we gave up like four A chances in the second period that we just got lucky on that they didn't go in. And that's kind of what it felt like behind the bench. It didn't feel in control. didn't feel methodical or everybody had a plan. And then they spent the rest of the six games trying to punch each other in the face. Coach, uh, overall, what is the main thing that makes you proud about the way your team managed the highs and the lows in this series? I think that the, the key for us in the, is discipline. It's a different kind of discipline that we have that we didn't have last year. Now, part of that, we created a personality and a style of play last year for ourselves, and we think we're good at it. But part of that was we spent a lot of time at the penalty box, and eventually, you know, I, I don't know, four or five guys out of our lineup cost us in the Vegas series, but we spent a lot of time in the penalty box in the Vegas series. And we were completely opposite this year. So the first two or three Tampa games, I think we had five high-sticking majors and four tripping, or it might be flipped. 
and then it stopped cold. The more focused, more mature, more disciplined group. Obviously, the series kind of switch, switches now. You guys will be starting on the road, something you guys no, did so anything. well. I'm not doing anything. Not doing yet? No, no I need a day off. Uh, one no. other one, uh, Chucky was talking, making jokes about the, the fire alarm today. Obviously, on a day like today, the biggest game you guys have. Do you think that yeah. affected the guys getting you ready know all what's, today? You know what's um, superstitions, right? In my career, the number of times that something got messed up at a hotel, and we stay in wonderful hotels, this is not a complaint. The hotel we're staying at is gorgeous. But if something gets messed up, it's like a guaranteed win. So the alarm is going off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, right? I didn't think I was sleeping today, but right around 5 minutes to 2, it almost happened for me, and then 5 after. Man, it, that place was, was rocking. I thought, oh, well, if this, if this holds true, I guarantee we're winning tonight. So, Did you have to evacuate, by the way, or, or you, nobody left? No, I sent okay. Mike Huff a text and said, do I need to leave or not? <laughs> and then you're, you're, like, you're so tired going, like, who cares, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. If you lose the last game, you don't care if the plane goes yeah. down, right? It's just that. <laughs> I know it's extreme, but, but I, I've had that moment. Fucking cares. Uh, Coach, go back to the answer you had a couple questions ago about lab tight games throughout the first rounds of the playoffs. Lab games, nothing really in control until the end. Yeah. Your team's composure in these types of moments and just seeing how they've built and being able to play their game despite things maybe not going their way yeah. or just things being tight where teams can press. How has your team do that and how have you seen them over your two years? How have you seen them grow to be comfortable in those types of situations? Maybe comfort's not the right word. but At our core, we're a pretty darn good defensive team. And then we have Sergei Bobrovsky. And, and Anthony Stoller's during the year, his numbers were incredible. But, but at the end of the day, our core is that we're a good defensive team. So if it's 1-1, one, one, halfway through the third period, like that's what we're good at. We're comfortable there. If, if it's 6-5, we, we might have some guys that are happy there, but we're not necessarily comfortable. It's not what we're built, it's not what we're built to do. So we've played an awful lot. I mean, most games in the NHL are just tight, right? If, if your mindset is, hey, we're going to go out to score the other team, then a lot of things have to go your way for that to be true. You've got to get more power plays. The ice has to be good. You've got to be healthy. You've got to be fresh. You count on a lot of things being in your favor if you consider yourself a really good offensive team. But if you're a grinding, hard team, you can lose guys. You can just scratch and claw fight your way into a series. That's all. Uh, Paul, you know, this was another game you've talked a lot about Bobrovsky and how peculiar a playoff has been. This was another right. game with long stretches, made huge saves. How, how confident are you that he'll be able to meet the challenge in this next round against a fairly formidable opponent? Yeah. Game? Well, based on what I've seen, there won't be any quiet time, so he won't have to worry about sitting in his crease quiet. Um, I, I think there's a chance, so I haven't talked to Sergey about this or, or Robbie Tals, but I think this is almost a new phase of learning for Sergey because I have, I know that I haven't seen it really before, right? Like, they came out, they got four shots on goal real quick on us, right? He has, he's got to be sharp. And then it got quiet for a long time. There was the four on, two shots on the four on four. Right. One of them was tough. And then it got quiet again. But at no point are any of the saves he making easy. As a matter of fact, I mean, they, they, he made a couple of saves, and they missed a couple there in the second. Where I, I thought this game was exactly like game one, two, three. Could have been five, one. I can't tell you which team, but you walk away going, "Oh, it was a grinder." Not, it was, but not for lack of offense. The goalies made some saves, man. Like I'm rambling now. You guys got to cut me loose soon. Last question, Coach. Uh, I'm sorry if you already answered this question. But it's you've fine. Won, you've won six straight in this building, and you shut down. High powered, you know, Marsha and Carson, yeah. their offense. How did your team be able to elevate? So, win six straight in this building and shut down that type of offense? Oh, some of it, in truth, some of it's luck. Because these series, these, like I said this on the ice, I would pay money to watch Boston and Florida play. I mean, if we did 82 games, there'd be nothing left of these men. But it is hard and fast, highly skilled at times, and brutal and violent at times. It's what all of the best parts of hockey is, the Bruins series. How we were able to change from 
you know, in game three and game four last year, they, they, they were dominant against us at home. We got that 3-1 lead. Like, we were in a little bit of trouble. Maybe game five in that series might be the most important game that we've played in the two years that I've here because we found a way, right? Goalie was great, scratch and claw. Game six was a shit show at home. I think the lead changed three times. No, Zach Dalby scored a huge goal, right? Kind of goal you remember for your career, and then come back up here. Goalie's out, right? I mean, there are too many possible inflection points when you look at Florida Boston games to say, for me to be that arrogant to sit here and say, well, this is how we did it. I got no idea, right? Like, you can take the last six wins that we have, and we could lose every single one of them. Could it's that tight? They're a hell of a team. It's great. It's great hockey. I don't know what it's like for you watching it. When you stand behind the bench in this, it's as heavy a hockey as I've ever seen. And that goes back 30 years when they actually were trying to kill each other, like legitimately trying to kill each other. Like it, it's an awesome thing to see that game at, at ice level. Truly.